So uh, the Monday, the Tanya for Monday, overview of chapter 35. Uh, we're going to start chapter 35. <coughs> Having defined uh, the Benoni intermediate person accurately as someone who perpetually struggles with the relentless, relentless, uh, pr- propositions of the inner animal and evil inclinations seeking to overtake him. Although the Benoni is, over vi- uh, is ever vigilant and always victorious, the burning question becomes what is the point? It's a never ending fight, never ending struggle. What's the point of all of that? What is the purpose of the endless struggle of the Benoni if he or she will never actually transform their, their inner evil, only forever battling it, albeit victoriously? So the, the whole idea of, of defeating an enemy, defeating an, oppo- an, an opponent, they doesn't get up again. He gets up again, you didn't really win, right? You won that battle, but then it comes back again and again and again. So what's the point of all that? That's what the Alter Rebbe is asking. Before beginning chapter 35, it will be worthwhile to note once again that the Tanya is based on the verse. For the matter of observing Torah and its vote is very near to you. In Hebrew, that's what the Tanya is based on, on this verse. That it's very near to you in your mouth and in your heart that you may do it. This verse asserts that the Torah is easily fulfilled through all of man's three forms of expression. Also called the garments of the soul, the three forms of expressions are the thoughts in your heart, the speech in your mouth, and the action that you may do it. In a deeper sense, the phrase in your heart refers only to, or refers also to the emotions of love and fear of God. So you have thought, and within thought, which is in your heart, you also have the love and fear of God. They too are very near to you, easily attainable. Love and fear of God. He writes, easily attainable. So let us elucidate still further the term that you may do it. In the verse, for the matter is very near to you in your mouth and in your heart that you may do it. Whereas the mentioned, the climax of the verse is its emphasis on action. La soy soy. Let us also understand in a very small measure the purpose in creating the Benonim. To be and to be and remain forever on the level of Benonim. For as explained in chapter 14, the souls of the Benonim are usually incapable of rising to the level of Tzaddik through their own will and effort, they were created to be Beinonim. Also the purpose of their soul descent to this world being closed within an animal soul deriving from the Klippa and Sitracha, the very antithesis of the divine soul. Antithesis, whatever. The top of the top. Yeah, so really, what is the purpose of the soul descent? To be closed within an animal soul deriving from the Klippa and Sitrach. Since they will not be able to banish the animal soul throughout their lives, nor even dislodged it from its place in the left part of the heart. So that no evil imaginings rise from it 
to the brain. So you're saying even if you're not um, fit to be more than a Benjamin on your own accord, if you hook up with the right community, the right mentor, uh, the right Rav, that somebody can inspire you in one direction that would lean you into that sadic level. Is that possible? It's a uh, very highly unlikely to happen. Someone was soul was was uh, designed to be a Benoni, it will remain a Benoni. The question is why why to, to, why did Hashem do it? Why did he made bane on him that will forever be battling with the evil inclination? Obviously on different levels, but it's a, a never-ending uh, struggle. So why did he create it in such a way? For what purpose? In his a stage, like you're going to go through this world, if you can get to a certain level in that bane him, that's greater than like. 75% of it. Within a Benoni. you're going to come back. To get to a Benoni. The road, and then you can maybe. To be a Benoni, it's very difficult. To, the next level. to be a Benoni, it's very difficult. A yeah. person has to constantly win any kind of, of struggle, thought, speech, and action. 100% control his thoughts, 100% control his speech, and 100% control his action. Very few people can say that they. They are in, 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 the, in that uh, level, a Benoni, let alone a Tzaddik. In his, what does it teach you? There's a lot of fakers out there. Because the true Benoni is someone that can say that he, he never succumbed to any temptation. In as much as in the Benoni, the essence of the animal soul derived from the Klippa remains it in its full strength and potency as at birth. Meaning even though he kept on beating it and beating it and beating it, meaning he's, he's, he's conquering it, he's victorious, he's winning all the time. The clipper st still has the same potency as before. Actually we share and I'm a slab but it's not expressed. Meaning you, you are taking away by winning you are somewhat disabling it, that it's unable to express itself. But it's like a lion in a cage, it's too strong. But he's in a cage, that's why he's not attacking you. <laughs> if you take him out of the cage, it will attack you. Same thing over here, you take away the thought from the evil inclination, you take away the speech, you take away the actions, you put it in a cage. Except that it, its, its garments, its forms of expression as evil thoughts, speech and action do not close themselves in their body. As mentioned above in chapter 12, the Alter Rebbe explains that by means of constant battle with his animal soul, the Benoni prevents the, the budding evil of this soul from expressing itself in his thoughts, speech and action. Budding, it's even the, the beginning, the, 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 it starts to bud. Yeah. It's like the flower comes out. You don't even... It, hmm? in the bud. Right, it's not even, not even allowing that to start. It's a completely uh, locked in. Because it's like So why, why then did the soul descended or descend to this world to strive in vain, God forbid. Seemingly, they strive in vain. What's the point of all that? Waging war all their lives against the evil incarnation, yet never being able to vanquish it. If you would have known that you're never, never able to win, you would say, "What's this? so let's not fight. Right. We're fighting because the... Uh, Imagine you would know the, the outcome of the game before the game started. <laughs> Say it's going to be uh, 
one, one, or zero, zero. It's going to be the outcome of the game. Now we have to just understand somewhat the background of this. We talk, Alter Rebbe is referring to sincere people. People that are really care about the, spir- the spiritual s- stature and the spiritual development. So, so a guy like this, try, let's try to put ourselves into, into someone, uh, someone like this, into his shoes. Now this guy, he's, he's battling his evil inclination. He's happy, he's winning, and he's winning, but he sees that he keeps on coming back. So, he can, so one day, a year, two years, three years, but at a certain point he's going to say, what the heck? Where, where am I going with this? I, I thought I won, and now he's coming back. Well, maybe he said a, a, a different lady the same dress. He's coming back with a different dress. So he's not bothering me about uh, davening properly, so it bothers me about uh, something else. You, you're done with that, it goes to something else. So a, 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 a sincere person, someone that cares about his spiritual development, is going to be bothered by it. Regular people don't even, it, 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 it doesn't even come to them to think about these things. The Alter is speaking about someone that is in the level of a bayonet, someone that actually wins all the time, and in that guy's mind, he can ask the question, what's the point? We can ask the question too, if uh, we know that it's never ending a uh, struggle, why should, we, uh, why should we put up a fight? As they say, if you can't win them, join them, right? Right? Yeah, that's true. When you come back over um, or relatives of yours, certain friends of yours reconnecting in some way or another, if they've uh, been in your life before, if they were very close in one way or another at certain times of your life, do they come back into this world in the same timing and try to rebond with you in another way? Maybe to be an aunt, an uncle, a cousin, a best friend. Does your soulmate that you have right now well, come uh, back with you? Well, one second, and it's not. Meet up it's again? not. It's not connected to. One second, I'll get to it, but it's not connected directly to what we're learning. Right. We're trying to figure out the Bainani's mindset of why should he even fight if he knows that it's going to come back again. Gotcha. Not reincarnation. He's in this in this lifetime, he has 120 years to live in this world, and he's he's at 30 years old. He's winning. He's winning every battle. Right. It comes. He's, he's, uh, he has struggles and he ca- keeps on winning. But right. he, at a certain point, everybody wants to to uh, relax. Right. So, uh, they you want things to come down. People work hard when they're young. They say, uh, uh, older age, they want to be able to retire. Right. Yeah, so well, so, so it's a mellow out, whatever it is. Any way you call it, but there's a limit of how much you can chase. There's a limit how many filters you want to sell, right? You say, okay, that's it. Uh, how many, for how many years am I going to do the same thing? I mean, 65, <laughs> 65, 70, die, enough. It's the difference between the journey and the destination. Mm. Obviously, obviously. Uh, the journey is what's what's important, but from the from the mindset of the Bayonne is you, you can ask the question of what what for. The Atrab is asking the question. He says So let's end off. It says to see Let this forthcoming explanation be their uh, solace to comfort them in a double measure of aid and to gladden their hearts in God who dwells among them in the Torah and divine service, the explanation will show them how to find comfort and joy in the godly light that abides within them when they study Torah and when they engage in the service of God.